The Creative Community is brought to you in part by a generous grant provided by the Diana and Simon Rabb Foundation. David Starkey and my guests this time are members of the Santa Barbara Printmakers Association, Santa Barbara Printmakers, um, David Graves, Bay Hollowell, and Don Zimmerman. Welcome to all three of you. you. Um, we're going to talk um, to all of you about two shows that you have coming up. Depends on when viewers are watching this. The first one is at the Channing Peak um, through the 17th of August uh, 2012. It's their, your annual open juried exhibition. And another show that's just gone up well, through August the 30th, this is at the Faulkner Gallery, and this is the Members Only uh, exhibition. So we're going to look at that, but you know, I want to talk mostly about the art of printmaking, I think, and, and let you uh, professionals walk us through it. <laughs> Don, um, you're uh, the chair of the committee um, for the Santa Barbara, Printmakers. Santa Barbara Printmakers. So tell us a little bit about what is this organization? Well, it's an organization with a history. It um, began in the late 80s <clears throat> as a monotype guild, just simply one type of uh, printmaking. And uh, over several years, it expanded to include all types of printmaking. And in the early 90s, be became the Santa Barbara Printmakers. And so now we're currently with our, seventh, our 19th annual period right. exhibition. Uh, the purpose of the group is, is to promote uh, and sustain printmaking as an art form. And by printmaking, we're talking basically about hand-printed or press-printed uh, uh, products. Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, the group is now about 120 members. Okay, so that's a big group. And mm -hmm. uh, it... Um, basically puts on approximately three, three exhibitions a year. And we have, as I said, the Channing Peak currently up and the, the members show in Faulkner. And in February, we'll be uh, having a show at the Jewish Community Center. Okay. Um, the uh, types, you know, printmaking uh, was at, uh, at a certain point seemed to be an endangered uh, kind of uh, art. Uh, some uh, schools that formerly taught it were, were phasing it out because of the expense. So one of the things that the group has tried to do is to ensure that there is a, a um, active, uh, viable community of printmakers. And this is the Tri-County, San Luis Obispo Ventura. Uh, well, actually, we're beyond that. We no. have members uh, uh, who show in uh, Canada and also in uh, Oregon who, oh, okay. who show in our shows. Okay. And so we don't restrict it to the tri-counties anymore. Okay. Anybody who can be juried into uh, the open exhibition is eligible to become to a, be member. a member. Okay. This happens once a year. Okay. Well, Bay, the first group of slides I believe you're going to talk about, is that correct? Yes. Um, tell me a little bit um, about who you are as a printmaker and then let's, let's segue into what, you, what we're going to look at. Well, I got into printmaking because of Sue Zimmerman, Don's wife. Um, who teaches a wonderful course through Santa Barbara Community College called Monoprints and Monotypes. And I was casting about after having retired recently to figure out what I wanted to do next. I had been a painter in a former lifetime and then an art museum educator for many, many years. And I was just lucky enough to drop into Sue's class. Um, she teaches a variety of experimental techniques that are really fun mm -hmm. um, and allow you to just explore all kinds of things in your art, whether you want to do representational work or abstract word, work, expressive right. work. And th um, this is at the continuing education? Yes. So a great opportunity. We should <laughs> tout our uh, <laughs> extension program. Such yeah. a gift to yeah. so many people. It's just, it's just been yeah. fantastic. So that's kind of how I got into printmaking. I had done some, you know, in my educational <laughs> process over the years, but um, this class really opened up to me the just the panoply of possibilities. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, let's take a look at some of those panoplies. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is Sue's work right here, right? This is Sue's work, yeah. And it's a really sophisticated, abstract work, and it's made with the most basic of materials, simply a piece of mat board and some pieces of transparent packing tape. Mm -hmm. um, now, the process that she used to create it is sophisticated in the sense that she had to know what to do with those right. very yeah, basic materials. Piece of work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's called um, uh, the thin space, which is a Celtic notion that Sue was intrigued by. The thin space refers to the space between the natural world and the spirit world. So she developed a whole series mm. of prints um, based on this notion. It's kind of a fluid space that we all encounter mm -hmm. from time to time. Mm -hmm. This is a completely different piece, obviously, um, by Patty Post. And um, Patty is very intrigued by animals. And um, she made this print using another really contemporary technique. Um, it's, it's now called polymer, uh, mm -hmm. polymer print making. And um, it used to be called solar plate, so a lot of people know it as a solar plate. But Patty actually made a drawing on a piece of clear plastic um, of this incredible bird um, who has a lot of human qualities mm -hmm. and sort of mysterious and, and ancient and um, just very evocative, I think. But she made that drawing um, on this piece of plastic and then put that over uh, one of these plates one of these that has been coated, it's a thin steel plate that's been coated with some chemicals, exposed that to light, to UV light, um, which then created an etching. Um, and she was able to just print it and make um, an addition of this particular But even print. just talking about the first two pieces, it sounds like a pretty complicated process. It's not just like taking out a you know, crayon <laughs> and drawing on a piece yeah, of paper. Yeah, it, it's complicated and simple at the same time. Yeah. It, it's kind of um, paradoxical mm -hmm. that way. Okay. And, and running a print through the press is just an alchemical process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you've got this big, round, heavy roller, and you, you put your little plate that's all inked up, and you put the paper <laughs> over it, and you roll it through, and then it comes out the other end. Yeah. And it's, it's just totally magical. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. And what have we got here? Oh, this is Nina, Nina de Craft Ward, who is also intrigued by animals. She has spent many, many um, hours drawing in museums and at fairs, mm -hmm. drawing animals. Um, and so Nina tends to go back into her sketchbooks and find sketches that she made, could be many years ago or could be more recently. Um, and she'll pull one of those out and make a solar plate or a polymer plate etching of that. And she's combining it with another really easy printmaking technique. Probably everybody in the audience has done this. It's, it's the monotype technique, mm -hmm. where you just basically make a painting on a plate and run it through the press. And you've got you mm -hmm. know, a reverse image of your right, painting. Right. right after she's done that, she'll take her solar plate of the animal, the little elephant in this case, um, and she'll put that right on top of, oh, okay. of her print. She's made left a space there for that particular drawing to mm -hmm. go. She thought this all through. Right. Um, and then she'll run it through one more time. So she can also can work in a, in a series, but each one of her prints will be very unique. So it's, she doesn't create editions, she, she creates series. Okay. Um, and she's obviously very concerned about um, the plight of animals on our planet. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you can, can just tell from, just from, image, from yeah. the way she's combined the painting and the drawing mm -hmm. in her image. Yeah. Now, this is very different right here. This is, this is just such a funny piece. I, I had to include this one. <laughs> this started out, if you look carefully, you can see a line drawing of a nude woman. <laughs> and because some people in some venues would find that not... Well, it's on TV, right? Not, not, <laughs> uh, not okay. Um, Colleen Kelly uh, was encouraged to modify her uh -huh. print in such a way, and she got this really clever idea uh -huh. of taking... Um, an, from an old pattern, uh, probably an old singer sewing pattern, right. um, and just gluing it on top of the print. And in printmaking, that's called chine collet. And you do it in the press. Mm -hmm. So you have to 
you know, position it and wow. you run it yeah. through the press. And so mm -hmm. it's it's just a it's just a really creative, unique, yeah. wonderful solution to that problem of well, and not everybody wants to look at a nude lady. <laughs> <laughs> what a variety of, of, of techniques and, and subject matter mm -hmm. that we have so far. What about this one right here? This one is one of my favorite prints of all. This is by Don Zimmerman. Um, Don starts out with photographs. He's a really mm -hmm. gifted photographer. Um, he plays with his photographs on the computer and sometimes adds textures. I think you can see some texture that he added in the stairs um, in this particular one. Um, he might tweak the colors a little bit and then he'll print that out. And then as a sort of separate process, he's made a line drawing from the photograph and made that into one of those polymer etchings. Mm. And he prints the black line drawing over top of the digital um, print that he's made. John, do you want to add anything since you're yeah. <laughs> here? We happen to be yeah. right here. <laughs> That's essentially it. Yeah. yeah. It's a, a combination or a hybrid print of. You know, yeah. Where, where is this, by the way? Uh, San Luis Obispo. Uh huh. In a, Sort of an empty office empty building. Empty office building, yeah. yeah. It's really evocative. And I love yeah. the title. It's it's down the up staircase. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and so that's our first round of, yeah. of, of stuff. So David, we're going to um, move over yes. to you yeah. for the, the next one. Before you start talking uh, through your little segment, tell us a little bit about yourself as an artist. I became interested in uh, printmaking uh, after seeing an exhibition in New Zealand in 1981. It took me a couple of years to get to take the classes before I could start uh, doing screen printing. Um, but once I started, I really got completely enthralled by it, and so much so that I dropped out of my master's program oh, to wow. devote myself entirely to art, which I did and continue to do so now. I followed up uh, screen printing with a number of other techniques and other methodologies and ended up teaching uh, at a visual arts center in uh, Maui, Hawaii for a number of years. And uh, from there I moved on to reduction uh, lino cuts and reduction wood blocks and painting and uh, drawing as well uh, and continue to print full time myself. So you have an extensive long background in well, it, it didn't seem to be that way when I started. <laughs> <laughs> and I never knew it would last as long as it has, right. but yes, I, I've been at it for quite a few years and uh, I've done many different things, but I uh, still find it just as enjoyable as I did in the very beginning because there's always new techniques, yeah, it seems like new it. approaches to how it's done, uh, and you're constantly going through changes yourself, which you can mm -hmm. then use to uh, use the printing as a way of uh, communicating that. Well, let's, let's let you uh, walk us through a group of, of images. Uh, this first uh, image that I selected was uh, a very, very well done reduction screen print. Now, I was attracted to it not just because of the uh, previous experience with screen printing, but because she's combined very, very deft handling of the material along with a strong visual image. To me, in artwork in general, but particularly in printmaking, uh, I always like that people keep the visual image uh, in mind the entire time they do it. A lot of times when beginners start, they merge off into something that's a little bit too effervescent or uh, mm -hmm. just a little hard uh, to pick up the aesthetic when printmaking lends itself so much to bold mm -hmm. uh, graphic design. Mm -hmm. And in this, uh, in this case, she's, she's so good at what she's doing she's able to almost uh, reproduce what looks like a photograph when in fact it's all handmade, oh, wow. hand done, uh, color by color working from light to dark. Uh, and she probably is working from a line drawing to begin with, but she'll slowly but steadily block out uh, the screen so that the color won't go through, which reveals the color that was put on before it. Mm -hmm. Working from light to dark and the last color would be a very dark, it appears purple on the screen probably a black purple, which overlays all of them. And it's astounding because this piece is actually about six by 10 inches oh, in wow. size. Uh, and she only did six to 10 of these. So she put in an inordinate amount of time to create a very visual and very wonderful image using a very, very uh, uh, methodical process. Yeah, and it's so evocative. I haven't been on a zipper in many a year. <laughs> Yeah. of that process of just being yeah. flipped around and you're just about ready to go on that yeah. ride. It makes yeah. you want to really get on or really get off. <laughs> Absolutely. So. 
Um, this is a print that I've done myself uh, that Don uh, thought I should talk about and have in here. It's, it is a good example of reduction wood block. Um, I don't use a traditional piece of wood, however. I use, uh, it's called MDF board, which is a medium density fiber board. Most of us are familiar with it in the inexpensive furniture we see or mm. we buy. Uh, but I use a handheld laminate router to, to cut the line into the, uh, into the board uh, so that I can combine a very technological finish to the l finish to the piece, but it's handheld, so I can use it as more of a uh, uh, an action. Mm -hmm. I can I can use it as a gestural object as well. So much like the screen printing, I will print a color, then remove part of the board, use the same board, print a color over it until oh, wow. I've layered it using one board. The trick is. Um, not just in creating your image, but keeping all the lines straight, much as it was with <laughs> yeah, uh, no, choices I can of see that, Especially with That's, a, a complicated yeah. design like that. When I taught, I, I would tell the students that I taught, as soon as you learn how to get your lines straightened up, you can do anything you want. But if you can't get your lines straight, then you're going to have problems your whole life with it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I, mean, I, had to, I had to, <laughs> I had to obey my own tenets about yeah. it. So. Oh, that's a, a really startling piece. This is a beautiful, uh, wonderful example of lithography, which is, uh, many people will be familiar with this as the, uh, one of the older techniques of printing, uh, developed uh, in the late 1700s by a, a German writer who was, happened to be an uh, artist and uh, actor, but wanted to print theatrical guides. So he developed this technique which combines water and oil and the fact that they resist one another. Mm -hmm so that a plate or a stone is treated in such a way that it attracts oil and repels, um, I mean, the water repels it from some parts and attracts it in others. What's wonderful about the lithograph is it's a very flat surface. It allows a very painterly or drawing technique to be uh, transcribed onto it. It also allows for very, very beautiful gradations of color, which is very difficult to do with some of the other printmaking okay. techniques. Yeah. And this is a this is a wonderful um, uh, example, not just of the, uh, the deafness of what you can make lithography do, because up close, this, this piece will, the darker colors will look very, very abstract, but from a distance, they look very representational. It's also a wonderful gradation. And, and remind me of the artist? Uh, Garrett, Spears Garrett Spears is the artist. He has two beautiful pieces in the show. This is a reduction woodcut as well by Sarah Woodburn. Uh, she uses a much more uh, traditional uh, manner of doing this. She uses handheld tools to do it, uh, but in the same way as the uh, other reduction processes that I talked about. She starts off with a color and then slowly reduces the size of the block um, and prints a color over the preceding color. Um, she ended up with a very, what I think is a very, very evocative image of something that looks like it's real. I, I believe it was based on a, a real plant. But it also looks like a sort of hybridized um, pattern form. And she's got interspersed through the entire piece a lot of what I consider more retro design patterns from the 70s or so. But it ends up be being very ethereal and kind of hybrid and odd looking. But again, a very, very good, strong image. Uh, and lastly, this is a piece by uh, Jean Demereau. Um, uh, this is a combination of. Um, uh, dry point uh, intaglio and uh, sheen collet. And dry point intaglio is really simply using a scribe on a metal plate to, uh, r to create a burr that will then hold the ink when you print it. But in this case, what she's done is she's uh, put a very, very thin piece of paper uh, of a different color than the, uh, the piece that it's going to uh, be printed on, on top of the plate and then prints it together. Now, the thin paper allows the, uh, the ink to be picked up in very, very delicate ways that you couldn't maybe do with a heavier embossed paper. So then she prints the, the print onto the paper, and the paper goes onto the, the basic paper all at the same time, uh, using a little bit of paste to hold the paper on. And it creates a, beautiful, um, a beautifully delicate piece, but at the same time, graphically very strong. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's take a, a little break here before we, we have a few more uh, images that we can look at. But I'm interested. It sounds like a really time-consuming <laughs> process. <laughs> Bay, how much time do you spend uh, a week working on, on printmaking? 
Well, I, um, I, I'm actually part of a collaborative printmaking group in mm -hmm. Ventura called the Ink Spots. Mm -hmm. And we have a studio <clears throat> in Ventura, and I go down there at least one day a week, and I work all day. Uh, just yeah. the whole day? Yeah. I'm pretty religious about it, yeah. Do, do you keep notes of ideas before you go down, or do you do it work in the studio? How does that well, I do a lot of work in the studio, but I do a lot of work ahead of time, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, sometimes I'm up in the middle of the night mm -hmm. jotting ideas, down yeah. ideas, and um, sometimes I'll take a drawing class or, or a sketching in nature class and get some ideas that way. Mm -hmm. um, some of my ideas just come from words that I read in the newspapers. Oh, um, so, you know, inspiration can hit from all different quarters, I think. Yeah. Um, well, Don, what, what's your kind of working process? Well, as I said, basically I, I start with a photograph, uh, my own photographs, yeah. and uh, then I look for um, a scene that for me is evocative of some kind of a story that can mm -hmm. be told from it. And then I uh, try to abuse the image in my computer mm. <laughs> to make it uh, you know, more interesting. Mm -hmm. And then I extract uh, some features of the, the photograph onto the plate, just as uh, Bay had described. Right. And so basically I'm going uh, from, uh, between the photograph and the plate. And are you always out with your camera looking for that <clears throat> evocative image? Um, I try to. Uh, I've been a little bit busy lately with uh, these shows, but <laughs> <laughs> I plan, I have, some, uh, I have some images I've been working on I plan to start printing. Okay. David, what about you? What's your artistic process? Um, I've been doing a lot of printmaking the last uh, number of years, but uh, my wife and I split our time between Santa Barbara and South Pasadena, where I maintain a studio. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm here, I don't uh, don't do so much work. I do a lot more thinking. Um, mm -hmm. Most of my work, or I should say, almost all of my work, is still based on the uh, the schooling that I left behind. I, I was an anthropology mm -hmm. major, and I ended up being an archaeologist for a number of years. So there are derivations of the things I learned that in uh, anthropology. But when I'm in my studio back in South Pasadena, I will work all day, every day we're mm -hmm. there. So wow. anywhere from seven to 10 hours. The wonderful thing about printmaking is that you can think a lot about it, mm -hmm. but it's very demanding methodologically. Mm -hmm. You can get very good at it, but it, it still slows the process down. So the creative process is very different from say drawing mm -hmm. or painting. Yeah. So. Well, um, we've been looking at, are all these pieces from the, the open juried exhibition, or are they a combination? Yes, the okay. Channing Peak. Okay. They're, they're still on display until the 17th. So mm -hmm. if, if the people are picking up the show, <laughs> but before uh, Friday, August the 17th, they should head down to the Channing Peak yeah. ASAP um, to get a look at it. There's many, the many more yeah. uh, wonderful mm -hmm. yeah, prints on the wall. Yeah, there. absolutely. And then we have the Summer Members exhibition coming up uh, it's at up, the Faulkner up, up Gallery. Up now, yes. Yeah, up, up now across the street in the library. Um, so we've got about five minutes left. Um, let's keep on looking at, mm -hmm. at images. I think you guys have brought in some spectacular pieces. Um, I'll let you all come on, comment on these as, as they come up. Well, this is by Tony Askew, mm -hmm. who is well known in Santa Barbara, and it's a monoprint with Sheen Collet. Um, I'm betting that he made it in New Mexico. What do you think, Don? Good bet. <laughs> <laughs> and why do you say that? Well, Just because um, I know that uh, Tony likes to go there and work with a master printmaker mm -hmm. um, named Michael McCabe. McCabe? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. who's an incredible person. And um, he, br he brings back these treasures. Um, you can see that he's used some very interesting um, found pieces in this. Um, he's sheen collayed those diagrams of um, machinery. And plus he's used some Chinese calligraphy and the little pattern at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so he just combines all of this with amazing viscosity printmaking. Just look at the colors. I mean, yeah, look it, at those colors. It really is delightful. Fabulous. This is uh, you. <laughs> okay, this is me too. No, that, yeah. well, well, you, you can talk. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking, Karen. this is Karen oh, Brown, yeah. who mm -hmm. is a fellow ink spotter <laughs> from Ventura. And it's a really large piece. <clears throat> I know on TV you can't tell yeah, how big everything things are. The same, yeah. yeah, so it's kind of strange. But just so everybody knows, this is, this is a really big piece. And um, this also is a mono print, 
because it has parts to it that could be um, printed again, such as the circle. So that's why it's called a monoprint, not a monotype. Um, and then the really interesting thing about this, uh, technically, is that she's covered it with a layer of wax. Um, so it gives it a very tactile feel. Um, and just visually, it kind of softens Particularly everything. Particularly if we were looking at it in person. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a piece by uh, Jean Demereau, Jean, Jean Demereau. It was based on a, um, <laughs> a, a, a walk that she and her husband took in Amsterdam to the red light district. <laughs> so I think she, um, she boiled it down to about as simple as you could get. Yeah. It's, a, it's a serigraph or a screen print, and it's... Um, when I looked at it, I didn't realize it because it's so well it's so well um, uh, obscured. But the um, the print is made entirely with one ink. That that's a purple ink that was printed onto red. Oh, okay. So she combined the where she was with her very simple kind of primitive sense of it of the um, experience and uh, came up with this wonderful image. I mean, it's very very bold and very very um, uh, visual. So. Yeah, that's gorgeous. <laughs> Oh, and that's by our friend Colleen okay. Kelly again. Okay. Remember, she did the, With the dresses. Yeah, yeah. So if you look closely, you're going to find another nude lady under there, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> covered up um, very discreetly with a pinafore right. from the 50s. Uh, <laughs> Who is this? Who is this? Sarita Margon. Oh. This is probably the most enigmatic, um, or yes. one of the most enigmatic. Oh, yeah. I know if you look very closely, everyone can see the glove and the hand yeah. in that interesting shape. But if you look really, really closely, there's a face underneath. The image yeah. of an elderly woman. Yeah, the hat, yeah. And it's photogravure. Yeah. So okay. Another uh, process. To, don't want to get too deep into it, but it's a it's a way of putting uh, an image on a plate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different than the silver plate or mm -hmm. okay. other kinds of things. We yeah. just have about 30 seconds left. Um, I guess let's just s stay here at the studio and, and in 30 seconds, <laughs> can you all tell me what, what are the one or two things that you would look for for someone who would like to join the Santa Barbara Printmakers? Well, it's a wonderful group to take advantage of if you're living in this area or here of the, here of the Santa Barbara Printmakers because it has not just uh, a lot of chances to show during the year, but you have a lot of very, very good printmakers that you can learn from and get to know. It's a, it takes a combination of things to learn, and that's, one, that's two of the most important. And, and we're a very collegial bunch. We, yeah. we help each other. Okay. And that, that's what's really fun about the atmosphere that Sue and Don set up in their class, is mm -hmm. that it, it's, it's kind of professional, but very supportive and nurturing and collegial at the same time. So we swap stories and techniques yeah. and um, help each other. I'm going to stop on that encouraging note. People can go to sbprintmakers.com to, to contact you and to look at the work. Um, David, Bay, Don, thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks having for having us. The Creative Community is produced with a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Rob Foundation. David Starkey, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.